Hi there, and welcome to episode three of Beyond the Photo with me, Damien Jackson. Thank you once again for joining me along the journey. If this is your first time watching, this channel is a mix of history and photography. We examine some iconic photographic locations and look a little bit into their background and history. This month, we'll be delving into the history of the old engine house at the Copper Mines in Tankardstown on the Copper Coast. Of course, for us photographers, we'll be looking at the best spots for compositions, angles and lighting in summer and winter for photographing the old buildings that stand overlooking the cliffs on the Copper Coast. So let's get started. The Mining Company of Ireland was established in Dublin in 1824 and quickly took leases on mineral areas all over the country. One of their main areas of operation was at Knockman, about 800 metres to the west on the Bunman side of Tankerstown. Work started at Knockman in 1825 and by 1840 it was described as one of the most important copper mines in what was then the British Empire. At Knockman they were working at depths of almost a quarter of a mile and at the same distance out under the sea. The company began to look for other deposits in the area as Knockman was beginning to show signs of flooding. By 1850 the company had moved to Tankardstown and started to build a new engine house. At its peak, the mine employed over 1,200 people. The engine houses were built to keep the water pumped out of the mines and to bring the ore to the surface. These engine houses were built to similar specifications throughout the British Empire at that time and here is a photo of one fully intact at Levant in Cornwall. And here's another photo of an artist's impression of what Tankardstown possibly looked like. The larger building housed the pumping house, which kept the mines free of water, and the smaller building, the winding house, which brought the ore to the surface. The chimney serviced the boilers that powered both houses. This map from the Mining Heritage Trust of Ireland shows the route of the tramway in blue between Tankardstown and Knockman. The ore was transported on the tramway from Tankardstown to a copper yard on the cliffs at Knockman, from where it was shipped by schooner from Stage Cove to Swansea in Wales for smelting. Although a lot of it has fallen into the sea through erosion, traces of the levelling cuttings into the ground and the retaining walls for the tramway can still be seen between Tankardstown and Stage Cove. Copper was continually mined for the next 15 years, reaching a peak in 1865. During these years, the price of copper fluctuated and the production of it was varied to suit the market. However, after 1865, there was a consistent decline in the market, and in 1879, the last few tons of copper were sold from Tankardstown. In 1906, public meetings were held in Bonman regarding the reopening of the mines. Here are some photos from the pool collection of the National Library of Ireland of a Mr. Reardon seen here in the pasture seat of the car on the left, who was the owner or manager of the old mines, with workers at the mines at Tankerstown. But the mines never again became profitable and were left to decay. In Stage Cove at Knockman, you can still see the shafts from the mines as they exit through the cliff walls. There's a sea cave that leads into a shaft. As you enter the cave, you can clearly see the copper seams and deposits in the rock. After only three meters, the cave leads to an opening or shaft, which leads right up through the cliff to the surface. There's also another shaft or tunnel 
about a metre in diameter that leads somewhere inland. Now it's against the law to venture into these shafts, and to be honest, I wasn't going in there anyway. The nature of this video can only scratch the surface of the mining history along this part of the coast, but there are some excellent resources on the Copper Coast Geopark website and elsewhere, and I'll leave some links to those in the description below. So we're just on our way to the engine room of the old copper mines in Tankardstown. Tankardstown is situated about two kilometers on the Tremor side of one man. From Tremor, you'll need to go through Anstown and pass the landmark of Pink House that I was speaking about last week's or last month's uh, log on Dunhill Castle. So straight through Anstown up the big hill and straight on on the coast road. As you continue along the road towards one man, you come to the crest of a hill and the chimney and engine room of the copper mines will come into view on the right hand side of the road. So you can't really drive past without seeing it. There's a car park on the right hand side of the road, just beyond the old engine house. The engine house stands only 30 metres or so from the cliff top, so as you can see it gets pretty windy out here. It works well with me COVID-19 <laughs> hairstyle. Uh, warm clothing is essential in winter and possibly most of the months of the summer as well. For the first composition we're going to walk past the engine house towards Anstown for about 150 or 200 metres. On the cliff side you'll see some concrete posts and some wire fencing that protect open mine shafts. And a few metres beyond that there's a gap where the old stone wall that's on the side of the road has crumbled away. There's a few choices for compositions along here. You have the wide angle shot taken in the sea and the cliffs, and you have opportunities there as well for long exposures as the clouds, they generally tend to move fairly fast in the wind on most visits. Depending on the tides in the sea then, you can also get some nice action with waves and white horses in the water. Another option from the first week of May to about early June, are to include in the foreground what we call in Watford thrift wildflowers or sea pinks I think as they're more commonly known throughout the country that grow in abundance on the cliff tops. Now these are mixed with yellow and blues of other wildflowers that I honestly don't know the name of but again they grow in abundance here. As you can see there's also the opportunity here for some panoramas as you can take in the headland right up as far as Dungarvan and bring it across to the Cumbra Mountains on the other side. In terms of lighting, just for demonstration purposes, I've chosen midsummer and midwinter on the photographer's ephemeris for these diagrams. In midsummer, the sun rises to the northeast of the engine house and sets in the northwest, and in midwinter, it rises to the southeast and sets in the southwest. Now, both are complementary to the engine house as most of the time your direction of shooting will almost always be in a westerly direction as the sea and the Cumber Mountains can be included in the background. There may be some compositions looking east but I haven't come across any. In summer you'll catch the sun setting behind the mountains and in winter similar to this drone shot it will set into the sea. So that's the first composition shot to death. Time to move on to location two. Oh, by the way, did I mention it was windy? Walk back onto the road and turn right. Walk for another 150 meters or so until you're almost at the crest of the hill. There's a gap in the stone wall on your right just before the bend in the road, and you'll see a little pathway. It's only 20 or 30 meters leading to the cliff edge. 
The difference of shooting from this location is that you have the sea directly underneath you and it can be included in the foreground. With the wind coming straight in off the sea, there's an opportunity for some long exposures to smooth the water and get some cloud action in the sky. Again, I'd recommend spikes for the end of your tripod if you have them because the grass around here can be a bit spongy and springy. As we're also at a higher elevation here, you can make good use of the Cumra Mountains in the background. My friend Tommy Quilty took these two lovely shots from here with the Cumras topped with snow in the background. You can see the way the use of a long focal length gives the impression of compressing the scene and making it look like the mountains are just behind the engine house instead of 20 kilometers away. As well as being an excellent photographer, Tom has worked as a printer for almost 40 years and provides a fantastic service for anyone requiring printing or framing services. You'll find them on Facebook at Tommy Quilty Photography. For the last composition, we're going back to the grounds of the engine house. We're pretty close to the buildings here, so you'll need a wide angle lens or take a few images and stitch them together in a panorama. When you enter the gate, veer towards the left. There's a type of seating or viewing area built that you can climb the steps and get some height to shoot looking back towards the sea. Oh, and by the way, did I mention it gets very windy around here? <laughs> One of the benefits of the wind is lots of cloud movement, and you can see that in this image, which is a blend of two exposures. One short exposure to keep the wildflowers sharp in the foreground, and the other about 30 seconds using a 10 stop filter to get some cloud movement. I also cloned out the steel fencing that surrounds the building, and the open mine shaft, and it has a lot of signs on it and ruins the composition. In terms of compositions, that's about it. I'm sure there are some more um, using a low angle, especially in May and June, because there's loads of wildflowers out there and looking up at the buildings from maybe, you know, six or 12 inches off the ground. But I think um, that's me done for now anyway. So that's it for me at the old engine house at the Copper Mines in Tankardstown, County Waterford. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate a like, a comment, or perhaps you might think of subscribing and you'll be notified of my next video. A reminder that I have two previous videos, one of the Metal Man in Tremor and the other of Dunhill Castle. My next video will be split between two locations, Lismore Castle and Ballysaggart Towers in West Watford. We'll be looking at the background and the history and some ideas for lighting and composition for us photographers. That way, if you do decide to come for a visit, you'll be able to make the most of your day. So until next month, when I might have a haircut, stay safe and bye for now.